God does not lie. Amen. God keeps his promises. And God has promised everybody who will listen to his son that if they would obey him, he would save them. That's a promise. God has also promised that everybody who rejects his son and will not obey him, he will destroy them. That's a promise. And since God keeps his promises and we know how God is, we ought to be a people who are promise keepers ourselves when it comes to God. Our lesson for this uh, month is continuing in the words of Jesus. Continuing. Uh, that, that means you don't leave. You don't divert to the left or to the right. You continue. Why? Because that word will lead you into eternal life. Anything else just leads you away from what God so wants for all mankind. The scripture tells us God is not willing that any should perish, but that all should come unto repentance. In other words, he puts the onus back on man. He's provided a way, and all he asks man to do is trust and obey him, and he will save them. Uh, this morning, uh, we're going to uh, be uh, trying to show you basically a reminder of most of, uh, of the lesson this morning. My title is God's Dealing with Mankind from Beginning to End. Is that all right? God's Dealing with Mankind from Beginning to End. And I've tried to uh, pull out and I want to just highlight some of those periods so that we can see that from the beginning of time, even to right now, that same God is the God that we are serving. That same God is the same God that put all of this into motion, and he's going to be the one that's going to bring it all to an end. But in between all of that, he has always given mankind exactly what he wants man to do, exactly what he wants man to know if man wants to be with him when all of this is over. Uh, reflecting on God's word um, and how he's dealt with man from the beginning to the end is a very interesting history. It was God's idea to make man in their image and likeness and give them dominion over all that was created upon the earth. That was God's idea. Man had nothing to do with that. You can go ahead and put the rest of those up. Man had nothing at all to do with that. Man was created only knowing good until he allowed uh, another entity to come into play which caused him to now disobey God in the Garden of Eden. And then God had to remove him. Church right there, that's why we keep going back to getting you help and trying to make you understand Sin cannot go unpunished. Sin does not get away. All of the things that you have done or is doing, you're going to give an account for it. There's a price to pay. How big, how great, only God knows because he's the one that will be doing the punishing. God is the one, no, no. God is the one uh, that is in charge. And all we have to do is, first of all, we have to know what God has said in order for us to do what God has said. Too many people are relying on too many people. <laughs> it's all right to rely on somebody to learn how to cook beans if you don't know how to cook beans. But you shouldn't be relying on no man or woman on earth to get to heaven. Why? Because no man or woman on earth has been there. The only one that has been there is Christ our Lord. And as our lesson suggests, if you continue in him, you too will get there. But we know that's not what folk are about today. I'm going to be using this railing uh, this morning to demonstrate the history, uh, mainly showing how God has always sought obedience from his creation, and especially those made in his image and his likeness. You know, scripture tells us that uh, uh, that the moon, and we, we, uh, some folk 
think that that was just something that man came up with, but if you process God's word, you will find for yourself that it is true. Uh, remember, God is the one that put the sun and the moon in the sky. Uh, man, God don't rely on man to dust it off, to keep it clean, to keep it working. Everything else that God created functions just the way God created it to function. Amen. Everything that he created except man. The, the sun and the moon and the stars don't disobey God. We even saw that when Jesus was on earth and before Jesus came, you refer back to the time of Jonah, where the Bible says the sea even obey his voice. But look at us. We smarter than God, aren't we? <laughs> Either that or God just don't really understand what we're going through, what we're dealing with. So we have to help him out. Well, we all know that the number seven, I'm going to be over here most of the morning, so uh, you folk over here on the right, I'm going to ask you all to just kind of you know, listen up. I hope I tried to make it big enough, but, you know, I, I, and something else, you know. <laughs> I, even thought about, I even thought about trying to do something this morning, but since I don't want attitudes from folk, I just figured, no, I'll just go and do what you do and be done. But I thought about, since I knew I was going to be over here most of the morning, I thought about asking the ushers to have everybody over there move over here, but some of y'all ain't going to give up them seats, are you? <laughs> and so since I didn't want to frustrate you and take your attention away, I don't want you sitting over here looking at me all crazy and mad and all that. So I'm just going to ask you, if you can't really see and you really want to, uh, just kind of move over. I'm going to try to speak to it as best I can. But that's what happens sometimes when we get settled in our ways and not God's ways, it's kind of difficult to, I guess, adjust ourselves so that we can learn better. Remember, this is for all of our benefit uh, as well. And so th this is where I'm going to be. So uh, if anybody, uh, hopefully the cameras, if they're doing whatever they're doing, if y'all can't get me this morning, we'll just let it be a vocal one. <laughs> they, they don't need to see, uh, see me. They just need to hear me. Amen? All right. So we all know that the number seven represents completeness. Isn't that right? Amen. Seven means whole. That's complete. In other words, seven, you don't need no more if you have seven, especially when you're dealing with God's uh, definition of seven. So what I'm wanting to do this morning, there are seven portions of this railing that I want to use to try to teach and show us this morning the importance of man obeying God. You have one section two sections, three, four, five, six, and look at lucky number seven. Amen. And so uh, with that, what we're going to be looking at is the, the, the time frame between Adam and Noah, uh, between Noah and Abraham. Then we're going to try to get over to the times between Abraham and Moses, and from Moses to the judges, the kings, and the prophets, and from those prophets to Christ, uh, is that right? Yeah. Uh, and from Christ to us, when I say us, this is from the time that Christ uh, came and lived and died and buried and was rose again, and the apostles, which whose teachings we have, us. Then I want us to kind of concentrate for a bit on us. How much time do you think you got? Okay, we'll see. <laughs> we'll see. Uh, in dealing with the times between Adam, uh, Abraham, uh, Adam rather, and Noah. Now, I'm just going to have to give a little... Um, uh, bites, but I'm hoping that if any one of these errors will cause you some concern, I'm asking you to go check for yourself. Read the book, read the, the, the time frame and see what was going on with them and be honest and recognize that the same stuff is still going on with us and whatever their outcome was, how is it that we can think ours is going to be any better or any different? 
Notice what my focus is. My focus is obeying God. <laughs> so, in talking about obeying God, from Adam to Noah, you recall a lot, of ha lot happened in between that time, didn't it? From the time God created the first man until the time he destroyed all of them but eight. That was a whole lot that went on here. Y'all need, I hope y'all know this account of what went on during this time frame. Starting with Adam. First of all, you need to know God, uh, Adam had a good life while he was with God. When I say with God, don't get me wrong. We know God is everywhere, always have been. But being with God uh, means more than just being in this world. Being with God means having a relationship with God. And Adam had a relationship in the garden that he no longer had once he left the garden. So while he was in the garden, he had a good life. He had a wife. He had no children yet. But he still had a good life. Ain't that right? Everything that he needed was provided. Adam had a good life. And then one day, we know that he started listening to someone other than God. Adam had a job. Adam had an easy job. He didn't have to do no tilling. All he had to do was dress it and keep it. After he disobeyed God, the Bible tells us that God told Adam, now, by the sweat of your brow, and you got to understand something, and in, in, in order for you, other than just being hot, what he's saying there is you're going to work until you sweat just to make a living. Amen. And we've been doing it ever since. Some folk. <laughs> uh, by the sweat of your brow, you're going to have to till the ground. And oh, by the way, I'm going to curse the ground. It ain't going to, be so, it ain't going to produce so easily for you like I had prepared for you in the garden. In other words, what is this? This is a consequence of your disobedience. Sin cannot go <laughs> unpunished. So, after they got evicted, then they decided to now go back and focus on what God says. God told them, be fruitful and multiply while they was in the garden. They didn't. Amen. Oh, I'd like to pause there, but I can't because I'm going to run out of time. I got to get down to the end. But I need y'all to think about that. What if they had had children while they was in the garden? And oh, by the way, and the children didn't do what mom and daddy did and eat the fruit. Mm. Yeah, coulda, woulda, shoulda. But sometimes it, I think it helps to kind of think about, wow. Because even in your own life, there's some things right now I know you probably say, coulda, woulda, shoulda. But looking back, don't get anything done. Only looking ahead is what we ought to be focused on. And so now... Uh, they began to have children, populate the earth like God had told them to earlier. But in time, and brothers and sisters, in all of our lives, that's a more important phrase than you understand. In time, or it comes to pass. As time, you know, time is just not running by and nothing's happening. There's a whole lot going on in time. And we need to be asking ourselves, what are we doing with the time that God has given us in time? Well, in time, what happened here? Well, in time, man became so wicked that God decided, or the Bible says uh, plainly, that it repented him that he had even made man. That's how wicked man had become. And so we know that God destroyed all mankind and every living thing except two of everything that he created with the flood. What's the problem, Brother Gate? Brother Gate? Well, some folk even today don't believe in the flood. Well, again, the Bible tells us that just because you don't believe that that means that make it not true. <laughs> no, not at all. 
You don't have to believe in the flood. You don't have to believe in God. Judgment day, guess what? Be too late then. Isn't that right? So make sure as you're going on this journey, you're not getting caught up in Satan's foolishness. I, as I was telling the class this morning, I asked you, please, don't just accept what I say and don't check it for yourself. Now, if I tell you something and you check it for yourself and it's in God's word, the only thing you and I need to talk about is, that's right. Amen. We don't need to be arguing, trying to do If God said it, that ought to be enough for you. It's enough for me. Amen. Satan is the one that wants you to have all this other stuff. Well, what if, what if, okay. Hmm. So God decided, I've had it with this generation. Y'all remember, folk was living to be 900 years old in here, huh? Yeah, during this period. God says, I've had it with man. I just repented. I'm sorry I even made man. Then the Bible says, but Noah found grace in the eyes of God. God spoke to Noah, told Noah to build an ark. Didn't just tell him, go out and build yourself an ark. God don't do that. God knew what it was going to take and what he wanted to save man by. So not only did he tell Noah to build an ark, but he told him exactly how to build it, what to use. He, God, God walked Noah right through this thing to the point where it didn't matter what happened in that flood, that ark was going to survive. Amen. Why? Because that ark was of God. Amen. Brothers and sisters, don't miss the message that Jesus taught. When Jesus says, uh, upon this rock I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it, just like those waters couldn't prevail against the ark. Satan is not going to prevail against the Lord's church. And if there's only eight folk in the church Amen. doing right when the Lord comes back, so be it. He's done it once before. Amen. Don't think he won't do it again. Amen. Why? Because God does not change. Amen. Sometimes I wonder if we're really getting the truth of what this is really all about. Are we getting the message? Or are we just going through the motions? Every one of you ought to be thinking about your own soul salvation. Every time you take a breath. Yeah, I know that sounds weird, but if you understand what I'm saying, it won't be that difficult. All I'm saying is just make sure that you got God in your life consistently. Continuing in the Lord's word, not just on Sundays, not just when you feel like having a Bible study. Well, Noah, we know that during the time between Noah and Abraham, some things happened. Uh, uh, Noah, way back up in here, you know, he, you know, it, it, now, I think I told you last Sunday, a couple Sundays ago, and I want to keep reminding you of that, God does not cause sin, but God does allow sin. Why? Because if he didn't allow sin, if he, when, when he eradicates sin, we all gone. So he didn't eradicate sin here with Noah. He started over with Noah and his family. And the very one he started over with, don't want to say he went out and got drunk. He do like some of us. He stay home and get drunk. But there were some rules for even being in the house. That because of what he did, he caused his son to sin. Yeah, the Bible says that Noah, uh, he was a husband man. In other words, he had a vineyard. And when you hear the word vineyard, you think of grapes. And you hear the word grapes and drinking, it ain't just grape juice for some folk. It's grape juice to the point where it can get you drunk. Noah drank too much. Fell asleep. Naked. God's law had already said that a man should not look upon his father's or mother's nakedness. And because of that, we know that uh, not Noah was cursed, but Cain was, I mean, uh, uh, Ham was cursed. Why? Ham is the one that looked upon, Ham is the one that, but Ham was cursed. But also was Ham's seed, Canaan which is the land that God was going to take 
and give to Abraham. Take Canaan's land because of what Ham had done. Remember when I said sin cannot go unpunished? You may not know when and where it is. This is another generation that's being punished for what Ham did. I mean, yeah, for what Ham did. So let's not miss the teachings, brothers and sisters. So uh, we know that a lot went on even in here. God gave Noah the same uh, commandment that he gave Abraham, I mean Adam. Be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth. Then he made a covenant with Noah. The one that he made with Noah, he said, that I will never again destroy the earth with water. So if he's not going to destroy it with water, what is it? It's going to be fire. The Bible talks a lot about fire, doesn't it? We only think about fire when we cold. We want something to eat. You need to think about fire from being an everlasting living place. And so, from Noah to Abraham, we know down in here somewhere, uh, the Bible says God told Abraham, you need to get away from your kinfolk. Family is important. Don't ever get, don't ever get that twisted. But family ain't, to the, uh, ain't important to the point where it caused you to miss out from being with God. Amen. Of course, it is for some folk. Uh, okay, it is for some folk. But I'm saying, if you want to be with God, it can't be. How about that? So we know that with Abraham, when God told Abraham, get away from your kinfolk, I'm going to show you a land that I'm going to give you. We all know that story. I don't have time to stay there, but for a second. Uh, he didn't at first, and God didn't talk with him anymore until he finally did. And when he and uh, uh, Lot separated, then God came back in and says, now, look as far as the eye can see. That land is going to be yours. I'm going to bless your seed. So we see what happened between Noah and Abraham. Now, with Abraham, from Abraham's seed, God made him promises just like he made Noah. He made Abraham promises. That through his sons, uh, Isaac and Jacob, they were going to have sons, and Jesus was going to come down through that lineage. We know that during the Abraham uh, Moses era here, uh, Abraham back here, and he had his sons. They went through some stuff. God had to show them that he wasn't joking either. And then his son Jacob, whom God changed his name to Israel, that's where God said, this is going to be my people. Amen. With all the other people on the face of the earth, there was only one people that was God's people. Today, you say that people have a fit. <laughs> they just can't believe that there can only be just one church. Matter of fact, so, it's so hard for folk to believe and continue in that folk are now leaving that same teaching Amen. that for years they've taught. But, brother, you got to understand, what endure means and persevere means means to stay until the Lord calls you away. But we got people that's being led away from Christ by other people. God's word ain't changed. How is it at one time you can be preaching and teaching that there's only one church, then all of a sudden you get a revelation that, well, there's more than one? So that means you have been lying to folk back then. But remember, you, you, you got to understand, you're up against a shrewd enemy. Amen. He knows exactly what man wants. Amen. And guess what man wants, it seems? To be liked, to have a big following. <laughs> yeah. And, you, you know, you, you Facebook folk, y'all know what followings are, Right? Uh, it, it, I think it's Facebook and Twitter and a few others. You know, they, they have that. They have followers. Folk be bragging about they got a million followers. Okay, I'm still trying to figure out how does that make them money. <laughs> but I guess it does. Uh, so you got all them followers. Let me just uh, let, let me just show you something that they hadn't thought about. You got all of these followers, whether it's a million or a thousand or two. Where are you leading them? I told y'all last week, we got some Kanye, Kanye West fans in the house. 
Now Kanye decided he's going to have he's going to start his own religion. You know he's going to have a lot of followers. Where is he going to lead them? He's not going to lead them to Christ. You know, it, it, it only takes once to make a fatal mistake. Fatal means it's, it's deadly. And anytime you make a mistake in going against God, it could be fatal. Why? Because at any minute, God can take you out. Which is why we have to understand we don't have time to play. We don't have time for games. Yeah, we need to be serious when we come together. We need to know if the Lord should come back right now, am I a candidate to go with him? And oh, by the way, you need to know that based on scripture, not by what you think or how you feel. Because God has always been clear in his instructions. And so uh, uh, Abraham now is on the scene. Abraham has then had his sons. Uh, uh, Israel has been called out of Abraham's seed uh, uh, by Jacob. In other words, Jacob name was uh, turned into Israel. We know the story that all that went on with Israel. Again, throughout all of these periods, there came a point where man got so disobedient, God had to make another move. He allowed the sin because if he took the sin out here, there would have been none of that. <laughs> Hello? So whenever he takes sin out totally, there will be no more. So, he sees that uh, there came a point during Abraham's uh, and Isaac's and Jacob's tenure where people got so wicked they disobeyed God till God sent them down into Egyptian bondage. 400 years. Anybody, anybody in here 100 yet? Can you imagine 200 years? 300? You can't, even, you can't even imagine that, let alone 400. But 400 years, they're down in Egyptian bondage. Why? Because of their disobedience. After 400 years, God said, okay, I'm going to go deliver them now. I'm going to take them out. And the Bible lets us know he chose Moses, didn't he? To lead them out of Egyptian bondage. <laughs> well, uh, Moses went through some preparation himself. Remember, he was in Pharaoh's house for about 40 years. He was out in the wilderness tending sheep for about 40 years. And he only got to lead God's people for about 40 years. Brother Hunter, I think 40 years is enough for a person to work and then retire. <laughs> work and quit. Quit after 40 years. 40 years can take, I mean, that's a big change in life. We know Moses, the Bible, the Bible says, Lord, let him live to be 120. Now, if I can live to be 120 and can still see, still got all my teeth, can still hear good. And oh, by the way, Moses was still leading then. He wasn't kicked back in a, a, a lazy boy relaxing. Moses was out there leading those people, but they got on his last nerve to the point to where, again, he disobeyed God. God told him, I want you to go and speak to the rock. Give my people some water. I think Moses kind of had one of those issues there that, okay, because he even said, you hard-headed, stiff-necked, do we have to keep getting you water out of, and instead of speaking to the rock like God told him, the Bible says he hit the rock. Now, you holy rollers out there who want to say, well, that's the only time he disobeyed. Okay. That wasn't really the only time he disobeyed, but that was the one time he disobeyed that God had it. That's why I tell you, again, sin cannot go unpunished. You don't know what the outcome of your sin is going to be, but it will be a, there is a consequence to sin. You can make it to heaven if you repent and stop sinning. But guess what? The hardest thing is to what? Stop. And so, we know that Moses led him all the way to the promised land, but he couldn't go in. God called him up and said, come here, Let's look over. All of that is the land that I'm leading my people to. He says, you can see it, but because you disobeyed me, you can't go in. 
Now, let me help you with something right here. The only bad part about that was all of Moses' labor <laughs> in dealing with those hard-head people just kept him from continuing to labor and deal with those hard-head people in Canaan. That's all. <laughs> Moses ain't going to hell, y'all. Moses is all right. <laughs> So what are you saying, preacher? Well, I thought you said if you sin, you, you can't. Uh, well, yeah, I did. But you got to understand, this is God's plan. If you believe Moses is in hell, let me ask you, what kind of chance do you have? We don't do nothing come close to uh, obeying God like Moses. What kind of chance do you have? So don't get it twisted. Matter of fact, God lets you know where his people are. So Moses, uh, the Bible says, the Lord, the Lord was Moses' undertaker. <laughs> the Lord buried Moses. And to this day, the Bible says, nobody knows where he was buried. Right. Satan is the one that'll get in your head and get you to trying to spend all your time trying to figure out where he's buried, only to end up losing your life. But then, after Moses... Uh, uh, doing also during Moses' time, before he died, during Moses' time, uh, what, no, after Moses died, remember, there was a period there where after Joshua also died, there was a period where they had judges. The Bible says that man was doing everything they wanted to do. Everything was right in man's own eyes. God used judges to try to deal with man. They wanted a king, God, <laughs> against God's will. God gave them a king, told them what that king was going to do, told them that king ain't going to do you no good. They wanted a king anyway. God gave them a king. God allows evil. They got a king. Look at what happened. And all the king did is led them away from God. Because man have a tendency to want what man wants over what God wants. And those that are following him tends to follow with what man wants over what God wants. Then after those kings, we know prophets. Came into being. This would be the period that would also include Isaiah, Jeremiah, Amos, Obed, all them. Major and minor prophets. What are they prophesying? They're prophesying God's word. Something that God has always uh, had in place from the beginning. My word is what you need to obey if you want to be right with me. Even the prophets come along and they are prophesying. They are telling the people what thus said the Lord. Then we get to a point to where even between the prophets, a lot of time span went there. But then we get down here where now we have uh, the prophets to Christ. Y'all know it ends with Malachi, right? So uh, anywhere in here where you want to pick up on the prophets, this includes David and all of them, all that, all that, that you read about in scripture, all coming down through the angles of time, here we are. <laughs> the prophets lead, lead us up to Christ. If Malachi ends here, now somewhere in here we can say where Christ was born. Okay? <laughs> God decided since the beginning of time, man has uh, been disobedient to him. He gave him laws. He gave him written laws. He sent angels to him. He sent prophets to him. Now we had a point where God decided, I'm going to go deal with him myself. Directly. The Bible says, God put on flesh, came to this earth, born of a woman, Galatians 4, born under the law, the same law that these folk were supposed to obey, he came born under that law. He obeyed that law while he was on earth, but he also was preparing them for the law to come. And so now we have Christ. And in this period, Christ got disciples. And after Christ died and went back to heaven, now those disciples became apostles. Why? Because that's when he sent them. Y'all know what an apostle is, right? One who is sent. 
Jesus was an apostle. Your Bible will tell you that, so don't freak out. Just go to 1 Peter and read it. Why? He was sent by God. And the ones that he sent were now apostles. Those apostles had to do what we are studying this month, abide in the word of God and teach the word of God just the way God gave it. That's why the Holy Spirit is the one that guided them in all things whatsoever they had been taught about Jesus, that they had known about Jesus. Why? So that they can get it right. Even God don't rely on man's own abilities to do what's right. And so we have the period now where you, we call it the Christian dispensation. We have the apostles. You have the, 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 the first church, right? Uh, in, in that is called uh, uh, the church of Christ. It's called the way. That way, the way is only one. All of that's in here. And I'd like to say for us, this is probably before our time. I got here from Christ to us because, yes, that's how for it extends all the way to us. But look at what the apostles went through and the first uh, church went through. Look at the suffering and the persecution they had to put up with and still was supposed to maintain their faithfulness to God. Being skinned alive, thrown in boiling oil, <laughs> set on fire being chopped up with swords. And oh, by the way, they didn't just die uh, just like a quick death. Most of them had a suffering kind of death. Why? Because that's what our Lord went through, suffering. And yet here we are today, we don't want to suffer. <laughs> but I'm just trying to show you, the same God from the beginning is the same God that we are serving today. And so, if I can get us down here to try to show you, here's why, where I want to draw the distinction. This says from Christ to us, this is the Christian dispensation. And it'll be the Christian dispensation or the last days until there is no more. But see, here's the issue. When is the last day? Uh, if we know that we're in the last time, at what point do we turn the corner to where it's the last day for us, that we're going to be ready? See, all of these folk, all of the folk in the first century church and the apostles and all them, they've already done what they're going to do. It's us. It's our time. And so, I don't know, I guess in our time, there's a few questions that we ought to uh, ask ourselves. Uh, <laughs> realizing we're in the last days from the time Christ came until the time he comes back again is the time that we're in. He's not back yet, is he? And we don't, we don't know how much longer this is going to go, do we? So the question becomes, how much time do you have? Can you see why you don't have time to play? Why you don't have time to not be sure? Uh, Ephesians chapter 3, uh, chapter 1, rather. Turn with me, Ephesians chapter 1. Uh, look at verse number 3 again. This is what we use as a foundation for the uh, lesson this morning, but I want you to see the rest of some of the rest of the story here. The Bible says, "Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ, according as He has chosen us in Him before this, <laughs> before this, God had already had a plan." For down yonder. <laughs> uh, before the foundation of the world. That we should be holy and without blemish. Before him in love. Having predestinated us. Unto the adoption of children. By Jesus Christ. To himself. According to the good pleasure of his will. This is all talking about God's will. Verse 6 says, to pray to the praise of the glory of his grace, wherein he has made us accepted in the beloved. God is the one that makes us accepted in Christ when we obey Christ. Amen. Then it says in verse number 7, in whom we have redemption, how? Through his blood, the forgiveness of sins, 
according to the riches of his grace, wherein he hath abound toward us in all wisdom and prudence, having made known unto us the mystery of his will. Don't you know God's will by now? Starting with the fact that he wants you to be saved and realizing that in order for that to happen, you got to be obedient to him. That's God's will. The rest of the stuff that man come up with, God ain't about all of that. Just learn what God's will is and obey it, and he's promised that he will save you. Verse 10 says that in the dispensation of the fullness of time, that's what we're in. Hello? In the fullness of time is when God sent forth his son. And after that, there has not been another dispensation since. The dispensation of the fullness, full, what does fool mean? So in the dispensation down there, when God says, and the Bible lets us know, only God knows when that time is going to be. In the fullness of time, the Bible says, God sent forth his son. Uh, and it says that in the dispensation of the fullness of time, where I was reading, verse 10, that he might gather together in one all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and which are on earth, even in him in whom we also have obtained an inheritance, being predestined according, uh, predestinated according to the purpose of him who worketh all things after the counsel of what? His own will. God don't do things on our will. Our will can line up with God's will when we obey him. But in his own will is what God does. That's why when folks start talking about why does bad things happen to good people, well, that's God's will. Amen. Why does good things happen to bad people? That's God's will. It ain't for you to try to figure out. It's for you to, the only, the only decision you get to make in that is which one do you want to be? Do you want to be a good person or do you want to be a bad person? Since God seemed like he let a lot of good stuff happen to bad people, do you want to take a chance on being bad and end up not being with him in eternity? Or would you rather take a chance on being good and let bad things happen to you just like it did with his son and be with him for an eternity? <laughs> Church, this is not difficult. Uh, it maybe gets frustrating sometimes because we just don't want to go through some stuff. But uh, scripture tells us that in order to please God, you got to go through some stuff and persevere. Amen. And oh, by the way, you got to go through it with the right attitude. <laughs> That's what's going to cause a lot of people to be lost. <laughs> a lot of people are in church, but the attitude is not good. Yeah. I'm here, but I'd rather be somewhere else. Well, guess what? God already knows that. So why are you wasting your time if that's your attitude? When we understand that, that, that in worshiping God, so much more of us goes into that than just your physical being. God wants to save you. He don't want to destroy you. But God cannot condone evil. Yes, he allows it. He puts up with it. Why? For our sake. Because in order to do away with evil, <laughs> he got to do away with us. That's just the sad truth. Well, let me give you, uh, turn with me a couple of passages here and I'm done. We're going to finish with Revelation 20, but I want us to go right now to Matthew 24. Matthew chapter 24. If nothing else sticks with you, if this will, I think it'll be helpful. Matthew chapter 24. I want you to first uh, look with me at uh, verse number 14. Verse number 14. I try to include this in my sermons often because, you know, you still got people asking the question, when is, when is the end going to come? When is all this going to be over? Well, you know, again, as I tell people all the time, don't ask another person, ask God. Amen. Jesus tells you when. In Matthew 24, verse number 14, he says, And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all of the world for witness unto all nations. And then, what do your Bible say? Then shall the end come. Now, who in here knows when this gospel has been preached to all nations? Especially when you won't even talk to your neighbor across the street. See, we don't know when the last gospel sermon, God knows. 
God, God knows exactly when the last person on earth to hear the gospel has taken place. God knows that. But Jesus is trying to help us. Remember, he says, you will know the truth, and the truth will make you free. Free from what? Trying to dictate and predict something that God didn't tell you. <laughs> so, in this same uh, teaching, in verse number 36, Jesus says, but of that day and hour, verse 36, Matthew 24, of that day and hour knoweth no man, no, not the angels of heaven, but my Father only. What is Jesus saying? I don't even know when it's going to be over. But I'm ready for when my Father tells me that's it, go get them. I'm ready to go. Are y'all ready to come? And then if you go over to verse 50, same chapter, but I want to start at 48 because there's something here that uh, so some of us need to get a grip on. Verse number 48, the Bible says, but, and if the evil, now this is talking about uh, the Lord coming back and how even today you got people out there who gotten to the point where they don't believe that the Lord is coming back because he ain't came back. <laughs> and it's been so long. And it seemed like every day the same thing is happening over and over. So the Lord ain't coming back no time soon. So I'm going to do whatever. Okay. Jesus taught on that. Right here he says, but, and if the evil servant shall say in his heart, my Lord delays his coming, and he began to smite his fellow brethren, and that's what's happening with us today. We, we'll tear one another up. <laughs> but we'll take all that the world is willing to dish out, just so we can keep a job. <laughs> just so <laughs> but Jesus has already told you what you need to be looking for. Those folk who don't think the Lord is coming back and don't believe that, they're the one that act the fool. They're the one that'll start treating you bad. <laughs> Why? Because they figure ain't no consequences. He ain't coming back yet. But Jesus warned them, he says, uh, and they'll begin to smite fellow servants and eat and drink with drunkenness. Verse 50, the Lord of that servant shall come in a day when he looketh not for him, and in an hour that he's not aware of. In other words, you don't know when the Lord is going to call you out of this world. So you really got time to play? Mm. You should know the truth. And the truth will make you free. 51 says, and the Lord is going to cut him asunder. And appoint him his portion with the hypocrites. You know ain't no hypocrites going to be in heaven. So where your portion going to be? <laughs> appoint him his portion with the hypocrites. There will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. That's from your Bible, church. Amen. Revelation 20. Revelation 20. And I'm done. Revelation 20. Look at 12 through 15. Revelation 20. John writes here, and I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God, and the books were open. Y'all get that? The books were open. I don't know what's going on in your head and thinking about what the books are, but I don't know. Uh, I can tell you what I think they are. The books were open. If you can picture it, uh, there's a, a lot of books that is going to be open on judgment, and those books is probably going to be the book of your life. <laughs> you know, I think it, even in, in, in Psalms, Psalms 90 lets us know, this is something y'all hear at funerals a lot, how we live our lives as a tale that is told. Where did you get most of your tales from? Y'all know them little story books that they Read, read, read to us when we were little. The little old woman who lived in the shoe had so many children she didn't know. <laughs> Mary had a little and all that. Those are books. God has an account of everything that you've ever done in your life. And if you repent and obey his son, he tells you, I will forgive you of all of that. But your life continues on, which means what? You get to start a new chapter. So, 
if you can picture this, and the books were open, and what did your Bible say? And another book. <laughs> and then what your Bible says? One book. That's this one. Everybody see this one? This is what you're going to be judged by. <laughs> Jesus said in John, uh, uh, I think it's for, uh, John 12, 48. He that reject me and receive not my word has one that judges him. The same word which I have spoken shall judge him in the last day. So picture this. The books were open and you're over here somewhere. Your life, all that you've done, whether you obeyed the gospel of Christ or not, is all there. And the book is open. And I think the Bible goes on to say, and they were judged according to the things uh, written where? Come on, come on, y'all. That's why I had y'all reading with me. Don't your Bible say, in the books? That means those books and this book. So when you look in this book and it says to you, love your enemy, and you didn't, oops. I can't, I hope you don't stand before the Lord and say, oh, well, Lord, I didn't know that was in there. <laughs> mm, really? Well, I'm sure he's got you on more than just one account. Because if you don't know that's in there, there's probably a whole lot of other stuff you don't know is in there. Why? Because you didn't do like he told you and read and study Amen. and apply. Church, I'm not trying to make anybody happy. I'm sorry. That, that's not my job. I'm trying to help you be saved. I'm trying to help you not make the fatal mistake of having to spend eternity away from God all because somebody wasn't man enough or woman enough to tell you the truth. We're not about trying to please people. We're about trying to save people. That's what Jesus came for, to save people, not to please people. But I've seen and I know those who are looking for pleasing stuff don't stay long. <laughs> so be it. When you stand before God and those books are open and he finds your page and he says, oh, you was one of those that every time my word, which was preached, came across your ears, you got an attitude, you fold your arm, rolled your eyes. Some even got them walked out. Can you imagine what God is going to say? Now, this is in your book, <laughs> the books. And then when he goes to the book and he says you ought to endure sound doctrine, right? <laughs> you ought to adhere to what God's word says. When he looked at and he judged this against what you did, guess what? Let's read it. 14. And death and hell were cast into the, the lake of fire. This, this is the second death. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Anybody don't believe this is the book of life? Remember, watch this. This, the word of God, is going to last how long? <laughs> sure is. <laughs> yes, this is the book of life. Eternal life is found right here. You don't find it nowhere else but right here. And if you obey this, you'll live forever. Because this is going to be forever. And yet folk want something smooth. They want something that God didn't say. And there are people that's willing to give it to you. <laughs> Thank God I'm not one of them. Amen. You hear this morning, you're not a member of the Church of Christ. A lot of folk have stopped saying that. A lot in our own brotherhood are beginning to say that uh, they, don't know, they, don't, they no longer condone or teach that there's only one church. They don't believe that there's only one church anymore. Yeah, that's what, the, well, we know it, that's what the Bible says, but the Bible also says everybody's not going to endure. Everybody's not going to stay with the doctrine. And we, when you have it hidden so close to home, it's, it's, it's scary. Uh, like I said, the thing that bothers me is, I know God already said that was going to happen, Leo. So don't get frustrated that that happened. It just blows me away with who's doing it. Folk who I know who have stood on the same doctrine that we are preaching now has gone away from it and has turned back against this saying this is that old antiquated foolish doctrine 
Wow. When did it change? Last question for you. Anybody who may have that kind of attitude about God's word and the way we worship God being old and antiquated. If you let that resonate in your mind just for one minute, I got a question for you. How old is the son? And you live by it every day, don't you? <laughs> How old is the moon? You don't get no more antiquated than that. Matter of fact, that was there even before the world was. <laughs> See what you're up against? Don't be fooled. Don't fall for Satan's trap, whatever you do. Jesus, don't let Jesus' life, his death on the cross mean nothing when it comes to your soul. If you end up lost, uh, that means Jesus dying on the cross didn't help you one bit. And understand, the reason it didn't help you one bit is because you didn't submit to his word. So yes, there are folk who don't like hearing or saying the church of Christ anymore. And oh, by the way, the church of Christ don't look the same all over the world like it used to. Which means you got to be able to discern the truth. You know, if, unless you don't believe what you've been taught now. If you believe what you've been taught now, why should that change three years from now? God hadn't changed it. But yet people are doing it. Why? Because people are leaving the church. They don't want to hear that. They don't want to hear the truth. But didn't Jesus tell you that? <laughs> so don't you leave because they're leaving. Amen. Amen. That's if you want to be with God. <laughs> so yeah, you have to be in the Lord's church. That's where the Bible says he has placed salvation. And that's the other part. Anytime you can find it in scripture, if that don't nail you down, nothing will. The Bible tells us that in, in uh, uh, I think it's uh, Titus 2.10, that salvation is in Christ. I'm going to tell you how to get in Christ right now. You get in Christ by, first of all, hearing, hearing the gospel, hearing about Christ, hearing about God's word. Then you got to believe what you hear. You ain't got to hear the whole Bible. Why? Already in his message, he got it laid out. Preach the word, right? Uh, 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 to every creature, he that believes and is baptized shall be saved, right? And then Jesus says, goes on to say, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I command. I, if I had to, I'd try to teach you all things in one sitting. But y'all get up and walk out on me, so why? So he didn't tell me to do that, did he? He says, uh, preach it, and then after you, once they obey it, now you got to be taught. But we got folk, we still got folk for whatever reason, and I'm, I'm, even though I'm tired of asking, I got to keep saying it because Again, that's going to be the witness against you. Those folk who won't, go, won't do Bible class, <laughs> whatever your justification, I just hope God is okay with it. Why? Because I got to keep letting you know that mm, you're not learning like you're supposed to learn. And the reason you're not learning like you're supposed to learn is because you're treating, you're not even treating God's word like a TV story. You won't... <laughs> Some of y'all got these episodes that come on TV. You won't miss an episode. You'll tape it. And if you can't tape it, you'll go buy the movie so you can get it. And none of that stuff is going to get you to heaven. And the very thing that you need to make it from here to there is the very thing that you got little or no time for. <laughs> and God is supposed to save you? Really? I can't tell you that that's okay. All I can tell you is you're taking a terrible chance of being away from God for an eternity. And I would hope nobody wants that for themselves or nobody, even those that you don't know. What man can really want anybody to spend eternity in hell? Satan. And Satan can get into some of us to where we don't care what we say or what we do and who we do it to. As long as we can Satisfy our own conscience. So after you hear God's word, you got to believe it. You got to believe it to the point where you will do something. And that doing something, uh, uh, now believe in what God says and stop doing things the way you've been doing and start doing the way God says, that's repentance. You got to be willing to confess your sins. Confess that Jesus Christ is the son of the living God. And then you got to be baptized. Baptism washes away all your sin, gives you a clean slate. The books now, your old book, those pages have been removed. Now you start a new chapter, a new life in Christ. 
Now there's record being kept of those things that you're doing in Christ. <laughs> so when those books are open and the book of life is open, you judge out of the things that are in the books. That means they're going to marry up pretty good. <laughs> Some of y'all still didn't get that. Now that you're a new creature in Christ, Jesus says, this be faithful now unto death. This is where your task is going to come. It's going to be hard. You, you don't left some folk. You don't left some stuff. But that stuff hadn't left you. Those folk haven't left you. They're going to be trying to pull you back. Satan wants you back. <laughs> Michael Jackson and them had a song. I want you back. That just came across my head. <laughs> Satan wants you back. And he's going to do everything he can to get you back. You got to fight to stay put. And that's all the Lord is asking for. Put up a fight for me just for a little bit. And I, I'll give you the strength you need, but you got to at least put up a fight. My goodness. And he says, be faithful unto death, and I'll give you a crown of righteousness. If you're here and you're already in the Lord's church, please understand. Oh, I, that's our history class. Uh, that, that, okay, I can't see it. From over here. That last little spot over there, that's us till the end. I want to make sure you understand. Focus on that. Since we don't know where death is. That's, our, that's where we are right now. We're living. That little part there represents now. We're living. Are you ready for Christ to come back? Since he's already told you, you don't know when. Only God knows when. And when, when God says to the son, time shall be no more. That means that's it. Ain't no more time. Now everything is going to happen. The Bible says in the moment, in the twinkling of an eye. <laughs> so when are you going to have time to go get something right? Later. You better get it right now. Amen. And you can do it right now while we stand and sing the Savior's invitation song.